All right, let's look at IGBTs. We'll look at how they're controlled. Very similar to a thyristor, except what? Who can tell me? What's the difference between an IGBT and a thyristor? Or what do they have in common? So I've got a firing angle again, right? Here's, I've got a gate signal. And put parentheses around, let's try to think, does that work? Yeah. No, that won't work. Um, this, I just want to show you this two pi plus this four pi, four pi, all this is trying to represent is that these signals, the firing angles, once you set them, they're always going to reoccur within the next period of your input voltage. So now, yeah, exactly. We can control when it closes like a thyristor by sending a pulse to the gate. So alpha is going to close our IGBT, right? So, and then beta is when we stop firing the gate, right? Beta is when we take the current off the base gate, right? Alpha, the gate current is applied. Beta, the gate current is turned off. So now when we turn off the gate current, what happens? The thyristor opens. So the output, I'm going to trace this a little better. The output is going to look like this. Here we go. So here's our output. So what does an IGBT have in common with the thyristor? How do we close the IG IGBT? By firing the gate, right? The first angle alpha, but what's different? How do we open the IGBT? By turning the gate current off. See that? It's just one more aspect of control. Typically, IGBTs are what's used in most uh, switching circuits. So let's look at how do we use IGBTs to control the speed of a motor? So we have something that's called pulse with modulation, right? And motor speed control. What does um, modulation mean? Think of it as maybe to change. So these are all pulsed signals. See these uh, rectangles? They're either on off is what it means by pulse. And with modulation means that the widths are varied. So over here, we just have a straight line more or less. Here we have a rectangle, now a larger rectangle, and now the largest rectangle, right? And then back in the same direction in terms of that width. So the closer we get to the peak, the bigger the width of each pulse is, right? Until we get to the zero and our width is gonna decrease. Same thing down here, so now we're at the zero. From the zero crossing to our peak, the widths increase of each pulse. And then as we approach back to zero again, the widths decrease. Remember when we calculated the average value? When we use IGBTs to control the speed of a motor, we're really not giving it a true AC sine wave. So the sine wave in the background, that's just to kind of give you a visual guide, right? The motor is getting this chopped pulsed with voltage. So the motor is not getting a true sine wave, but guess what? The average voltage of the pulse with modulated output will equal the sine wave. And since the widths are varying, but biggest at the peak and back down, you're still going to create stator poles to get that motor spinning. Let me, I'm just going to peek down below. Got it. Let's pretend this signal right here. So I've got A, B, and C on the motor. How do I get my A to B voltage? How do I get the voltage on? We'll do minus on B, positive on A, A to B. For that to happen, this thyristor has to close. See that? And this thyristor has to close. 
my negative voltage is on B and my positive voltage is on A. This configuration represents our first peak from here to here, right? Pretend we're just looking at the A phase, right? How do I get, how do I flip that pulse width modulation? How do I flip it around? In other words, I want minus on B and positive on A. I want, actually we said that backwards. Now we want negative on A, right? Let's think about this. Yeah, okay. So now we want minus on A. We want the voltage to flip around. We want minus on A. So this thyristor closes, and now we want positive on A. In other words, we want that negative peak across the A phase of the motor. So here's positive on B. So now this pair of IGBTs operate together, right? Positive on B, negative on A. And in about two slides, I've got a great diagram that shows this occurring for every phase. But this configuration, these two IGBTs, is how we get the negative peak applied on the motor. So this is how each IGBT can work in tandem to create pretty much a faux AC signal, right? But that doesn't explain speed control yet, does it? How do we, how do we use IGBTs for the speed control?